Hi, welcome. My name is Neil O'Connor and welcome to the FinTech unit at Monash University. This is the second semester, the second year we are running it. We have a lot of students enrolled this semester and we are excited to go through the areas of FinTech that just gives you a base understanding of what we're going to be confronting in the future of finance. You can get a lot more information on the lecture that I go through today and in the other lectures that I do for the first week with, you could refer to Gregory LeBlanc, which is a well-known professor, lecturer at UC Berkeley. He's covering the same areas that I'm covering here. And so you'll find a lot of commonality in the content or in the logical flow of what we cover. Look at all of the startups around the world. Like these are all the startups in the US that are picking away at the low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit meaning the different services that banks should be providing at a much greater value to customers, but they're not. So startups are coming in and taking away those services. Even in Europe, the same things are happening. So what is this FinTech space about? Well, what we're going to cover this semester are six areas of the World Economic Forum framework. And so in any week that we are covering, just be aware that you are going to be in one of these weeks. Plus, we're going to cover one week of cyber security. And that's very, very important that we cover that. It's not directly noted in the World Economic Framework, but it is an important thing. Today, I'm going to look at deposits and lending. And so we can see with deposits and lending, we have this area of the World Economic Forum Framework, the Wheel of Destruction, Wheel of Destruction, Wheel of Disruption, it's deposits and lending. And let's have a look at what we can learn in this area. Okay, so deposits and lending, it's about access to loans, peer-to-peer, -peer, virtual and mobile banking are growing in adhesion. And the bank as a platform concept is becoming more and more popular. If we go back several decades, we can imagine that the main source of information about how good or the quality of a potential loan recipient is came from the FICO score, that is short for Fair Isaac and Company, which created a FICO score, that is a scoring of a customer's ability to repay. Wow. So that was introduced in 1989 and that has been used by a vast majority of banks in the US and potentially around the world. But also if we look at those equivalent credit scoring companies in Asia, there's Experian, there's Equifax, there's TransUnion. And I'm pretty sure if you have a credit card that your information is with one or more of these credit scoring companies. You cannot escape having a record with a credit scoring company. And what was it all about? Well, it was all about scoring you. How much do you owe? How much new credit do you have? The length of credit history and your payment history and the credit mix. And so that was the traditional way or the traditional source of information that banks have relied on to determine the quality of a customer to repay a loan. But what happened in 1994, there was this small company, a small bank, Capital One, that was about 350th in size in the US and they came up with a new idea. Let's just give loans to a broader range of lenders. A broader range, you say? Yes, a broader range. And that is including lenders that may not pay back. And so their whole idea was to give more and more loans and 
to try and manage the default rate post loan acceptance. Ah, and then in the process they would learn about what type of lenders are more likely to repay and what type of lenders are not. Ah, and you say, wow, what, what type of bank would do that? Well, look what happened to Capital One. Now they're the largest credit card issuer basically in the world now because of what they have been doing is actually giving loans to a broader demographic which enables them to do more research and development on what are the signals or the source of information that gives me the best ability to make a decision whether you will repay a loan or not. Wow, they do that? This is what's happening. This is the new revolution. This is even before fintechs came along. Ah, so what did they do? What they did was demographic profiling. That is, they would put down the names of all of the various people wanting to have a loan. Mike, Mary, Claudio, Robert, Dora, and that's their balance, there's their age, employment, white off. But they would actually gather as much data as possible, not relying so much on the FICO score or Equifax or TransUnion but actually creating their own database, creating their own big database. Wow. And so all they're trying to do is trying to strengthen through algorithms, big data algorithms to find out, well, what is the best demographic that allows me to make a more accurate decision to give a loan to a customer? Wow. Wow, and so all they're doing is training and scoring. Now banks looked at what Capital One was doing and they said, oh, you're crazy. You're just throwing money away. You know, every 10% of the money you loan, is you're losing. You will never survive in that way. But what Capital One saw in that money that they were losing, they saw that in research and development. They were using that as a testing. They were training their big data analytics to find out what is the ideal profile that we could lend to and have the maximum assurance that we will get the money back. Wow. And so the whole aim of Capital One was to find new attributes and characteristics to improve lending decisions that FICO wasn't doing, that Equifax wasn't doing, that TransUnion is not doing. Ah, wow. And so what they started to do is give loans to students. And the banks would say, why would I give a loan to a student? How can they on earth pay back a loan to me? They've got their student loans to deal with. But Capital One saw students differently. They saw students' future job and earnings potential as being the real engine for their ability to repay the loan. Ah, new way of thinking. This is a research and development that Capital One has gone through. Training and scoring. Wow. Okay. And so you've had more and more fintechs getting into this area of training and scoring. And this is basically what peer-to-peer -peer lending is about. And we have Lending Club, Earnest, Affirm, Upstart. There are, sh I'm sure there are others that will go through this semester that have set up in Malaysia and in other areas in the Southeast Asian region. But here is the big area where banks and the fintechs have really focused on to really try and understand your ability to repay. And it gets back to the big five personality. What is that? Well, if we can improve the quality of our lending decision based on some personality trait of you, then wow, if we can find out what your personality is, then we can improve the quality of our lending. Wow, this would help us better predict your repayment potential. And the big five personality is a common personality test where we look at 
five big areas of your personality that we can score everyone on and basically we are really trying to test your degree of agreeableness if you are more agreeable in nature then it is more likely as the fintechs and as the banks predict that you will, will repay a loan wow isn't that strange right your personality is associated with your ability to repay i thought it was all about your earning power no personality does matter all right so be careful so what is it about this personality and where has this gone this collecting your personality traits to find out if we can make a better decision whether to give you a loan or not wow well we could go to facebook and facebook data reportedly helps companies to guess your credit store score because we can actually look on your facebook pro profile to see your degree of agreeableness based on what you like based on pictures that you post so if you like compassion international john foreman of uh, pornography pornography harms the book of mormon circles of prayer banks and fintech companies have found that this is actually positively related to your degree of agreeableness or if you on your facebook profile have a lot of things like i hate everyone i hate you i hate police and all of those sorts of things then they were negatively associated with your degree of agreeableness so i didn't have to ask you oh how agreeable are you no i just go to your facebook profile and actually look for whether you have more likes or more postings associated with one category that is your most left side column here versus the right side column uh, next to me here wow so can we do have machine learning algorithms to predict your degree of agreeableness now remember we want to predict your degree of agreeableness so then we can make a more accurate loan decision yes we can so what they have predicted in data analytics data scientists have worked out that it's probably only your spouse most of you are not married that who can have a better prediction than a machine learning algorithm on your degree of agreeableness wow okay put spouse aside the machine learning algorithm is actually better than any other prediction algorithm out there wow that is amazing of what big data is actually helping in loan and lending decisions these days now in banks and now by fintechs ah wow so i can help you predict or a whether a borrower will pay me back by asking the borrower why do you want a loan and if the borrower says one of four of the following things and which of these would you predict that they say would be a better predictor of their ability to pay back which of these words do you think it would be would they say god thank you promise debt free graduate lower interest rate after tax hospital minimum payment which of these words in their response to why do you want a loan do you think is best predicting of whether a borrower will pay back a loan ah let's have a look shall we it turns out that if the borrower talks about i want to be debt free or i want to help to graduate i want a lower interest rate or i want to use minimum payments these are all predictors of the more higher likelihood that a borrower will, will repay a loan wow that's amazing okay so now we have a lot of small business lending platforms out there that have much more data on individuals they have data on your big five of personality they didn't ask you they can go to facebook and find out that 
they can actually ask the question, why do you want a loan? And then use that to predict your ability to repay. We can get more information on other things that you are doing that may be predictive of whether you'll pay back a loan. For example, are you studying medicine? Are you studying law? Are you studying accounting? Yes, or finance, okay? They may be positively associated with your intention and your success of your future intention to pay back a loan. Ah, wow. Okay, so this is what fintechs are doing now. They're actually really in big data mining, going to your social media, finding out your ability to repay. And then they don't have to ask you the big questions. Yes, they might ask you, why do you want the loan? And then predict from that. But they don't have to fill out a full asset and liability and income balance sheet. Yes, banks do that every time you go for a mortgage, you have to fill out all this information. That's the traditional way. But now you'll find a lot of fintech companies have much less information on in terms of the traditional asset and liability balance sheet to, to determine your ability to repay. Uh, they're looking at your personality. They're looking at whether you're studying for a degree. They're looking at many other factors that Capital One has found out over the last four decades, three decades, yeah, three and a half decades, that matter to your ability to repay. Remember, it's about training and scoring training and scoring and also it's the mindset the traditional bank's mindset was we've got to minimize at all costs any defaults on any loan we give out whereas the mindset of capital one was let's give out the loans let's do training and scoring this is all research and development and now the fintechs that have taken hold of this approach have just expanded even further, including your social media profile, including many other factors. Ah, in the end, it's all about creating big data so we can do training and scoring to maximize the accuracy of giving out a loan that will be repaid. Wow, okay, so that finishes okay so that finishes our first segment of lending okay so that finishes our first segment of deposits and lending i hope you're excited like me like isn't it amazing how the banks they had the monopoly then capital one showed a new way like capital one was a bank but it really grew in terms of credit card management. It really focused on credit card management. It did a lot of training and scoring. It gave out loans to new lenders that banks never gave to. And so what we see is the fintechs grabbing hold of this Capital One model and taking it even further. And so I very, it's a very exciting area, this deposits and lending. Stay tuned for the next area, and that is insurance. I'll catch you in the next section. Bye for now.